Tak så mycket at I stander. That was about the Swedish that I know. Um, so I'm afraid that you will have this talk in English. Um, you are allowed to put your questions in Swedish or Danish, if that's okay with you. Um, I'm, uh, my name is Ole Tastrup. Um, I'm the CEO of Jokurix. And I'd like to start the presentation by presenting a small movie that shows how our main product, IndieTreat, works. Let's have a go. Cancer is often thought of as one disease affecting different parts of the body. But in reality, there are actually more than 100 different types of cancers. And there are more than 400 different drugs and drug combinations available. This makes the task of choosing the right cancer treatment very challenging. And that challenge is reflected in the response rate among patients being treated, which today is around 30%. Often, the oncologist only has one shot at choosing the right treatment, and it usually takes months before they can see any results. This is where IndieTreat can assist. IndieTreat is a method that focuses on finding the perfect treatment for every individual patient. A small sample is taken from the patient tumor. IndieTreat then expands this sample to hundreds of microtumors and tests all available treatments individually. In a matter of days, IndieTreat identifies the effective treatments from the ineffective ones. This is done by measuring the growth of the individual microtumors. An effective treatment will kill the tumor cells, which causes the microtumor to shrink. IndieTreat then presents detailed data on every treatment tested. This helps the oncologist to choose an effective treatment for every individual patient. IndieTreat will increase the number of cancer patients responding to treatment. To Curex, because cancer patients are individuals. Just to sum up, the name IndieTreat comes from individual treatment design. And what it's all about is that IndieTreat can identify the efficacious treatment for the individual patient. At the same time, it will also tell you to which treatment this patient is resistant. There are a lot of good drugs out there. The only problem is that we, it's hard for us to match them with the right patient. I will show you that a lot of the drugs we have are efficient if we find the right patient and we do the right combination. So what we do is that we optimize the value of the drugs that are already approved. We believe that IndieTreat will become, for cancer treatment, what bacterial sensitivity testing. You're probably all aware of if you have an infection, then you just test whether an antibiotic will kill the bug or it won't. That is exactly what we do in the IndieTreat. We are located at major hospitals. It's been very important for us to be exactly where the customers, the patients, the surgeons, the oncologists are. So, Chukurix is located at two major hospitals in Copenhagen and the biggest hospital in Hamburg, Germany. And we're now expanding into the UK and Sweden. So we know exactly how this should be incorporated. With regard to the company itself, uh, we believe that there's a huge growth potential. The tests have already been developed and tested in more than 900 patients with promising result. We will now go into the final validation study. I will show you how that will be constructed. And that was actually launched here in October. We have already received the first patients. We expect the test to be marketed in 2020. And uh, as an additional uh, benefit, we were uh, provided a grant of 29 million from the EU. And um, actually, this was the only Danish company now I hear that was also a Swedish, which I'm happy. Um, it was only Jokurix that received this funding, a small company in Denmark this year. As I already mentioned to you, we are present at major oncology centers already. And not the least, one of our partners is Europa Colon. Europa Colon is the biggest 
patient organization looking at corrective cancer in Europe. They are one of our partners. At the end of this talk, I will show you that there are also a number of very interesting perspectives that goes beyond corrective cancer. But what is actually the need? It's probably not a surprise to you that cancer is an individual disease. So the idea of having sort of one size fits all doesn't work. Um, it is often ineffective and it is unnecessarily costly. The historical response rate, as it was presented in the movie, is between 25 and 30 percent, meaning that only one quarter of the patient will respond to treatment. This is devastating for a cancer at late stage because we lose the patient before we have found the right treatment. We need to find the right treatment up front. Just a couple of words about corrective cancer. That is the most diagnosed cancer in Europe. At the moment, about half a million new patients come every year. And very importantly, even though we would like to uh, completely treat uh, and cure the cancer, um, that is not likely to happen if it is cancer at late stages. But we hope that we can convert the cancer to a chronic disease. And we already see patients that are coming back, so unfortunately they get a relapse, so the disease appears again, then they will be tested once more and provided another treatment. This is a patient. Uh, this is a patient number 806. And what you see here is a traditional CT scan. Almost all our patients will be CT scanned. And um, they're in... Uh, can I run here? I'll do that. Um, what you see here is the liver. These dark spots is bad. That is exactly as it was presented in the last talk. That's metastasis. That is from what the patient died. So what we do is that we take a small biopsy, a small needle biopsy of that uh, metastasis, and then we uh, create small microtumors. These are um, 0.01 or less millimeters, so very small. And you will see here a couple of them. And actually, if we could run that movie. Um, hello. There it's coming. So what you see is that it grows in a matter of a few days. And this guy doesn't. So this is a microtumor that was treated efficiently with the right combination of drugs. And here, it just grows. And that is the test. So it is not, it's not a genetic test, proteomics test. We look at whether the tumor from the patient is killed or it's not. And that is what matters for the patient. So this is how it looks. That is what I showed you. It will grow to about four times its size um, in a week or a week and a half. And if we treat it rightly, then it will not grow, and actually it will fall apart at some point, then the immune system will take care of the rest. This is how it looks when we uh, test patients. What you see here is a number of patients, and up here, a number of treatments. Now, green is good, highly sensitive, red is bad, this patient is resistant. So, if we just take, if you will, uh, get this disease, hope that you are not this guy. Nothing on the shelf were effective. On the other hand, this person is very sensitive. But what you should get out of this picture is that it is, they are really uh, uh, responding differently. Every patient is different. But we can, with the drugs available, find the right combination. And <clears throat> that is what this is all about. More than 900 patients have been recruited to develop the test and to show that it is predictable. And it, we can show that in 58% of the cases, Inditreat can find a treatment to which the patient is highly sensitive. And you should compare that to the 30% of historical response rate. Furthermore, patients that were treated in accordance with 
the recommendations on the test, they uh, showed a, a significantly longer time to progression, time to when the disease unfortunately progressed again. In conclusion, these results have led the oncologists in Denmark and in Germany and in UK that we uh, are, are uh, partnering with, and they said, this is truly very interesting. We are prepared to run an investigator-initiated trial. It's a little bit complicated, but I just want to mention that it is an investigator-initiated trial, meaning that it is the oncologists that have their hand on the hot plate. They are the guys responsible. It's their career that is on stake. And they will also cover a significant part of the cost. So they really believe in this. And how does it work? The clinical study that we already have done um, works like this. The patient come in, in this case, a 77-year-old woman with a stage four, the latest stage with metastasis to the liver. The physician will decide on the treatment as he or she normally does. We will then, in parallel, run the intertreat. And in this case, he decided to use 5-FU. It's an old drug that had been used for 40 years. That was a bad choice. Now, he doesn't know this. He will treat irregardless of this test. And you see, that was not what we suggested. We lost the patient. Um, after four months. Another example, here is a male, same situation as stage four, correctal cancer with metastasis to the liver. Here they decided on a combination of three drugs, Folfox it's called. Um, interestingly, shortly thereafter they switched. It's very difficult to uh, understand exactly why they did that, but they switched to another combination called Folfiri. That was a good idea, because here, what we say is Folfox, that's there, the patient was resistant. However, to what's Folfiri, Folfiri, it is, it is not, it's not highly sensitive, but the patient is sensitive. And this patient um, was alive after eight months. Let me just show you two other examples. I will take this, because this is, um, in an earlier stage, this is stage three, so that is now the tumor is only in the colon. It has not spread to the liver yet. And here, Folfox was uh, suggested, um, bad idea, and uh, we lost the patient after four months. So if you should be inflicted by this disease, you should be like this guy. This is a 46-year-old male, stage four, and uh, running the Indutreat, this person is almost sensitive to everything we have on the shelf. There's a couple of ones out there that uh, is not that efficient, um, and, uh, and the person was alive after 12 months. So that's the kind of study that these oncologists have looked at and said, this is truly very, very good. So this is how it's designed. Now, the new study that started here in October um, there, the patient will go straight into our test system, and then we will pick the right treatment and treat the patient accordingly. Who are going to do this? Um, we have four major hospitals that will run the trial. Uh, we have, in Copenhagen, we actually have Bispebjerg Hospital and Rieshospital, they are combined. So that's the two major hospitals in the Copenhagen area. Um, we have at the University Clinic, Ebendorf, Hamburg. Uh, it's a huge hospital. It's, it's about three times the size of Rieshospital, being the biggest one in Denmark. And then Weile. It, Weile is a, uh, a oncology uh, hospital in, uh, in Denmark. And then we have here Queen Elizabeth Hospital in, um, in Birmingham. And then I mentioned, uh, again, Europa Colon. We have um, a clinical advisory board where the chairman, some of you may know, Nils Brunner, and then we have Andreas Block from Germany, Henrik Harling from Denmark, and Dian Morton from the UK. This is the management uh, team of Trucurix. Um, beyond me, we have uh, my co-founder, 
uh, grid hail that's actually here today that you can ask everybody everything about the test itself. And Jürgen Kuba is stationed in Hamburg and he is taking care of business development. Nils Brunner is heading our clinical advisory board and Oliver Eigenberg is taking care of CE registration and ISO 13485. We are registering the test um, now and here we have the board of directors, Paul André, that is here uh, with us today that you can talk to our chairman. Um, this is actually a co-founder, he is in Germany. Uh, Ulrich Spengler is also in Hamburg and he is a, um, actually a serial entrepreneur within diagnostics. Um, some of you may know Johan Dreyer, uh, the CEO of Sanyona, and then Joan Ferret uh, is in sales. So what are the targets that we are aiming for? Uh, this year, uh, we said we want to initiate the clinical validation study that we can take off, that's done. Uh, and in, in 18, we will establish revenue strategies for the market that we go into, Denmark, Germany, Sweden, UK, and France. We will have the test CE and ISO certified. We will establish, establish additional sites in Germany, the UK, and Sweden, and France, sorry, and we will prepare the sales organization. The recruitment of patients uh, will take a year, so we expect that to be finalized um, end of 18, and then the study will be concluded in 19 and market launch in 20. This is the, the way in which we will sort of sweep over Europe. We have decided to um, home in on Europe at this point in time. We can go into other markets because our IP, it's a little bit complicated slide maybe, but we have strong IP protection of issued patents. Uh, you can see these are all issued, and they are issued in Europe, uh, in the US, uh, Canada, Australia, and India. Um, there are technical competitors. I mean, you should always be, you should be concerned if there are no competitors. Uh, so we like competitors, uh, we just need to be better than them. And we believe we are. And our unique selling points, that is that we can actually, on very small amounts of tissue, we can run up to um, um, hundreds of, of microtumors and it is broadly protected. With the clinical validation, we'll be the first of these functional, where you look at the growth of the tumor, uh, the first functional test that have been clinically validated. And let me just show you this. I mean. Um, we've also been asked here, how does your test differ from some of the other tests? Everybody wants to say they can treat uh, the individual patient. I think it's very important. There are no one technology. When you get into the hospital, the doctor will use all the tools at hand. And he will look at pathology, at patient history, blood uh, uh, biochemistry, genomics, proteomics, scanning, so they would do CT or PET scanning, but there's one test that is missing, and that is the functional test that will tie this together. So Indutreat will not replace these others, but it will be there on the shelf um, uh, for every patient. And now I'm getting to the end. Um, invite you to be part of this invent, uh, investment story. It is a tremendous market. If we just look at the countries that we are in, then the market for this test is about 7 billion. And if we move into other cancers, obviously, it will be significantly larger. Revenue in 2020, we can come up with news as we go because it's not a blinded clinical study that we cannot make. And, um, <clears throat> and the EU grant uh, will help of financing the part of the clinical study not provided by the hospitals. And uh, these are the numbers. Oh, sorry, this, I don't think I need to go into this again. Experience team, patent. The technical uh, part of this technology have been developed. So there's a very low risk. And, um, and then we have the key opinion leaders. Very importantly, they will actually be the first guys that will sell this. They have said, when this works, we are prepared to buy it ourselves at our hospitals and uh, spread the message at conferences. And here are the numbers. Subscription started just here a couple of days ago, Friday, Friday the 13th, and uh, there are two weeks of uh, subscription. Um, this is what we uh, plan to raise. 
and uh, we have already secured 50% of the 18. Here's the uh, valuation. And our first uh, day of trading is expected to be the 24th of November. And here is what we're going to use the proceeds for. I hope I've already told you what that is. And the last slide. Um, now, we are in colorectal cancer, but this can be applied to other solid cancers. We have already tried it in ovarian and kidney, where it works. And uh, there should be no technical reason for why we couldn't go into other solid cancers. And then we can go in and certify patients for clinical trials, companion diagnostics. Preventive cancer therapy is very interesting in the future. Obviously, we would like to avoid cancer to happen. And we are in a, in a large study now where we are looking at that. And with that, I thank you for your patience. Thank you. Tack, tack. Eh, vi kommer mixa lite svenska och engelska här nu. Eh, 24 november då går ni till First North. Roligt. Eh, vad är dina förväntningar på bolaget efter det här historiska? Uh, well, I, I, I see this as sort of the start of a journey. Um, in essence, well, maybe I shouldn't say that here. We are not, we do not have our back against the wall, so we have funds. But we decided this is the right time because now we go into this clinical trial. So we are convinced that the value will go up and then we will have this EU grant uh, in a few months. So, so we think the timing is right. Uh, Jokurix will start on this journey. We want to have the profile uh, of Jokurix out there. And there I think a listing will help. And are you prepared? How did you arrange the company in order to get ready Ooh. for this? We have been at these training courses uh, with NASDAQ, and I must say there's a lot uh, with regard to communication that we're not used to. Okay. But, have you done but, some media uh, training, or you didn't uh, need, uh, maybe? Yeah. We, we, uh, <laughs> but but I, I think at least we, uh, we use Sedamir, and they have been very helpful. Okay. And so, so we, we will uh, pull on their experience. Okay. Uh, what kommer ni att tjäna pengar på? Uh, kommer ni att tjäna pengar på utrustning eller per patient? We, yeah. Förklara intäktsmodellen. Yeah, um, we will uh, we will be paid per test, so it's not the equipment. It is simply that each patient that will receive this test that pays that cost. So we will conduct the test and we will deliver the results. Och så att det är ni själva som kommer att genomföra testerna, så att uh, there's no need for uh, education in för no. the, the doctors, för exempel. Men kan de tolka resultaten? Är det lätt? Kommer det att vara en färdig... Kommer det stå, använd medicinen XX? Um, well, when you saw the colors, uh, there is sort of... There could, if there is a, a, a shining green, you should go for that. But some of the patients, that could be some treatments that are close. And then uh, it will be in a dialogue with the uh, physician, but in essence, it's a very simple readout. And you just take the green colors. It should be said, there are some patients, and you saw a few of them, that will not respond to anything. But what we are con what we're sure they will have is side effects. I mean, as you all know, this kind of treatment have a lot of side effects. So it is horrible to put a patient on a treatment knowing that the only they will get is side effects. And that you will avoid? So we can, yeah, so we can present to them that unfortunately we do not have anything on the shelf for you. That's not the message that most people want, but unfortunately that is the situation for a number of patients. Okay, and back to the, the stock market. When you go to the, the first north, how much uh, of the stock, of the value will be free float? Um, we will float uh, about 20-23% of the company and it's, uh, I mean, of the 18.3, we are floating about 9. Okay. Någon som har en fråga kring det? Ja. Mm, frågan var, just repeat the question. The frågan var alltså om eh, tekniken kommer att fungera även på icke-solida tumörer. Ni pratar om solida tumörer. 
Mm. Um, we have decided not to go in to uh, leukemias. Um, that's not the same to say that it doesn't work. We have just decided that we will go for solid tumors. But there are indications that it could be used for non-solid tumors as well. But to Curix, we'll have to focus. And uh, if the stock market uh, won't provide you with as much money you need, you have also one secure uh, financial uh, mm, provider, and that is uh, from EU, actually. Uh, the project Horizon will, that will make you receive like uh, 30 million uh, Swedish crowns every year for not three more years. Or uh, Unfortunately, not uh, every year 30 million. We have 10 million Swedish uh -huh, okay. uh, in three million, years. Okay. So it'll be these. So not so 30. much. Is that yeah. more symbolic? Unfortunately, not so much. <laughs> but that's, I mean, it's... Everything it's, counts. Everything counts and it is enough to run this study. Um, and again, because the hospitals will carry a major chunk of the cost. Uh, so, so we will have more than needed for the clinical study. So some of these EU funds will also be used to establish more sites. Mm. Uh, you were the, one of the co-founders uh, for the company. Uh, what, what about the, the others? Are they still with the company? Yes. Uh, now, Grit is here, somewhere there at the back. Uh, that, and we were three founders. And the third uh, is on the board. Okay. So all founders are there. And uh, what did you expect for the company once you uh, founded it? Did you, could you see this coming? No. <laughs> I didn't expect this. I should say I have um, spun out another company from Novo Nordisk and, and that we sold to Thermo Fisher some years later. And I actually believe that probably would be the same for Tukurix. Um, but, but I think when it's sort of th this opportunity came that we actually could develop the company ourselves. Mm. Say, wow, let's try that. Okay, and where will we be next time we meet? Say in one year? Well, in two what years, uh, I will hopefully show some revenue. Um, that would not That's happen a good in a start. year. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we want to go out and see the Tukurix label on these tests. I mean, when you are there with the patients, we, we, we have a 36-year-old woman, stage four, two or three kids, and she died within four months. Then that tricks something. So, it just need to get out there. So, and that will happen after this clinical trial. Thank you. Mm, uh, that's a follow-up on my one of my first questions. The test that you will sell, how much can you? What's the price tag? There, what 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 we sort of have said, we actually have had some discussions um, in the board, and we haven't finalized that yet. But it will be. Um, probably below 2,000 euros, so below 20,000 Swedish. Okay, we have one last question there, please. I only heard your first question. That we take that first, and then how many days uh, does it the test uh, it require? Take, yeah. So, so the uh, you saw that growth curve, and it will require between ten and fourteen days, um, and then the result is there. You you will have to work to to wait for that tumor to grow. That is not a problem, uh, treatment wise. That is within the window where the treatment is decided. Okay, and your following question was? My other question was, if there's a problem with them, with someone colorblind, are you going to put numbers on the top? Okay, but it's their own employees that will uh, analyze. The question was, if you have problems with colorblind people, right? Yeah, no, no. Uh, I mean, actually, there are numbers behind these colors. So it's just easier to very fast yes. sort of see what's... Well, you have to think about everything, don't yeah. you? <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you so much. Good luck with uh, your company and uh, how exciting it will be to see thank you. when the quoting, when the listing is on. <laughs>